Ben. Um, thank you very much for spending a few minutes to um, talk to us. Um, I'm going to ask you a few questions um, really aimed at helping startup researchers. And my first is really, if I was um, uh, at the beginning of the research process myself, about to do my own research project, um, what would be your advice to me in terms of designing a project and avoiding common pitfalls? Okay, uh, well I guess um, learning from the experience of others is a good uh, model there. So reading around the material that's available and uh, looking at those accounts that are frank, so those accounts that um, identify the uh, problems that people have encountered as well as those accounts of success stories. And those materials come in all sorts of different places. Um, so there are textbooks, there are um, other sorts of uh, book and journal publications, but there are also uh, various things on the web as well that are available to people to, uh, to, to kind of get started. Okay, anything in particular I should look at that's well, a frank account of uh, a warts and all research project? Okay, well, one of the things that we've done at the National Centre for Research Methods is to put the um, the presentations from the Research Methods Festivals uh, onto our website and those include uh, some of the presentations of um, speakers who've been given the brief of talking about their particular method uh, with the what is format, so what is um, the social network analysis for, for example, and in those accounts those speakers uh, are often quite frank about some of the challenges that they've faced in, in undertaking their particular field of research as well as the reasons why people should follow it. So um, that would be one sort of easily accessible web resource that uh, is a good brief introduction to, to a field and then leads on to other things and people often in those presentations also refer to wider literature to follow up but knowing where to start it's, it's good sometimes to go with something that's quite brief. That's great. So that's NCRM at UK? It is, yes. Very good. And I mean surveying the field of, of research methods at the moment what excites you methodologically in terms of present developments? Okay, I mean, I think there's been some exciting things here at the Mixed Methods uh, Conference because you've got people who are um, breaking new grounds, not in mixing methods in and of itself, but actually the range of um, uh, different methods that are brought together in, in combination by people here has been uh, very, uh, very, very exciting. And it's exciting because um, it's interesting to think, well, how will that work? But actually, some of the results have been very uh, uh, exciting as well. Um, and to see people rise to the various challenges that there are. So, obviously, researchers are a lot at the moment thinking about the challenge of um, impact, of demonstrating you know, the value of what they're doing. So, although the things can be exciting for their intrinsic merit, I think there's also uh, lots of new ideas coming forward from people when they're asked to sort of give a wider justification to audiences outside of academia as well as, as, well as within academia. And that, that's a challenge, but I think that, you know, there, there are various ways in which people are responding to that in, a, in an interesting uh, and informative way. Do you have any, on the flip side of that, do you have any worries about um, different directions in, in methodology at the moment? Well, I guess one, one worry is that it's so hard to keep up with developments across the field and the uh, pressures from research councils and, and other um, organisation, professional organisations are towards uh, researchers having a competence across such a wide range of methods that that's expecting a great deal from people to be able to um, you know, be, a, be a competent researcher across that range and to keep up with the rapid pace of development. So I think that is, uh, that is a, bit of a, uh, a bit of a worry and I guess you know, one response to that is, is the trend towards teamwork which then means that some of those anxieties that people are bound to have about how can I possibly keep up with developments across such a wide range are, are, are alleviated. And, and that doesn't mean to say that uh, therefore training should go back to training people just in discrete methods because it's important that people have an understanding of a method so that they can take part in the team even if they aren't necessarily expert practitioners of that method. But I think that's, that's certainly one um, worry that I've got about just keeping up with the, uh, with the, with the incredibly fast pace, of, fast pace of change and the, and the spread of methods that are available. 
you wouldn't want an incompetence across the board, say, of um, research techniques then? No, certainly not, and, and I guess that is one thing to guard against, that, that uh, I've certainly got some qualitative uh, colleagues who, who say that um, you know, they do get a bit worried when people uh, go to a talk, hear about uh, qualitative interviewing, and then think that they can do that on the, on the strength of, you know, how hard can that be? <laughs> um, that, that must be easy, and I think some of the you know, sessions here have been very interesting in what they've revealed about um, discussions within teams, whereby being part of a team has helped to guard against that uh, you know, over-optimistic uh, assessment by some people that, you know, well, that I've, I've been to a presentation on that, maybe I've done one course on that, therefore I can now do a whole project using that method. So, um, not saying that, that uh, you know, teamwork is the only solution to that, but I think it, it, it is important that people do subject their work to peer review at all stages, both you know, the, the, the research design funding stage but also coming to conferences like this and, and presenting and getting feedback and, uh, and you know, this is a particularly good conference in that it does allow for lots of time for question and discussion at the end of presentations which often allows you know, other people in the audience to feed in ideas and, and, and uh, prevent people from you know, maybe uh, out of naivety um, over claiming on their ability in, in a particular Graham Crowe, thank you very much. You're welcome.